what you see today is super easy to sew it's only a few seams and it's such a great design because you can really showcase your pretty fabrics with this look at the texture on this fabric it's capsule collection time hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing i've managed to escape out to the garden today the sky is black i can hear thunder so i hope i can finish talking to you before it starts pouring we had the biggest storm last night and we lost power for about 10 hours and that's why the video i'd promised for yesterday was actually uploaded this morning very early so you are getting two videos today because i want to stay on track of the daily videos i'm making because i'm sewing every single pattern in the book so beautiful by kenneth swung she's the owner of itch to stitch and i have put a playlist down below in the description box so you can click and follow along i'll be adding all the videos in there and i already have an introduction overview of the book and how the patterns are and the fabrics I've chosen. I've shown you three Mornington tops and dresses. This is one of my Mornington dresses. I love it and I'm wearing it now. I hope you enjoyed seeing the techniques I've shown in the video about the Mornington dresses, how to line that V neckline, super neat, and also the V bias binding technique, which is also super practical. Please follow along on the blog posts as well because there's more to see than what I show in the videos. And today is about the tax stand dolmen. The tax stand dolmen can be whatever you want it to be, depending on your fabric choice, of course, but it's a really simple design that can really showcase really special fabric. My fabric is special, although it is black, it is special because it's got texture and it's got special things on it. It's not just a plain black fabric. This dolman sleeve is a three quarter length, so it's not short. I know a lot of you in the comments always ask me when I show short dolman sleeves, how do I lengthen those, you know, because you want long sleeves. Well, you don't need to worry about that for this one because it's already got the longer sleeve in the one piece. It's integrated and it's super easy to sew. In this case, I'm making mine short because I like short dolman sleeves I will get much more wear out of this little wrap if it has short sleeves and if it has long sleeves and I know that in the practicalities of the way I dress the neckline is finished super neatly with facings inside you have front facings and a back facing those are interfaced you do all the things you do with facings to get a really nice finish you know sew them trim seam allowances grade them and the stitch all those things but I'm not doing that today. It's meant to hit at the full hip and you have little belt loops that are sewn onto the side seams and one at the center back. There is a center back seam with some shaping in there. There's also some shaping on the side seams. It's not a complete rectangle or sort of boxy design. It's very well drafted and the sash could be used to bring it in or you can use your own belts or in my case, not use anything at all. <laughs> If you're catching on, I have made some changes to the pattern for it to fit the way I want it to fit into this capsule collection. So depending on how you want it to look, you can choose a woven or a knit. I would stay away from a very heavy woven. Now, dolman sleeves will never ever fit like a setting sleeve. Setting sleeves are cut here at the armhole and then you have a separate sleeve because the dolman sleeve is integrated. When you move your arms, you will have some drag lines and volume here that is the nature of dolman sleeves and you'll see that but you'll see it more if your fabric doesn't drape if it's super stiff so i would stay away from like a denim or a cotton i would stay with a more drapey maybe a rayon twill a tensile twill a rayon a silk <laughs> crepe that sort of thing some linen rayon blend would also be nice you can also choose a neat fabric and you could make this be a jacket you can make it be a cardigan or just like a little wrap top however you want it to be i have chosen chiffon and i'd mentioned i'd made a few changes basically i want my little cover-up to go over everything that i'm making you know my mornington tops and dresses have a tie on the front that creates a little bit of bulk i wanted this to just be something that i put on top without having to wrap it and actually tie it up with a sash so I'm opting out of the sash and the belt loops <laughs> and I'm doing short sleeves I'll also not be doing the facings because I've chosen a chiffon so a chiffon with facings you can sort of see the facings through there and the neckline can be finished really nicely with self-made bias tape from the same fabric so that is what I'm doing I've basically really simplified this and made it super easy to sew and it'll be great to wear it's a roomy design you have a lot of space in there about three and a half inches of positive ease at the bust 
about four and a half inches of positive ease at the hips. So it's not that you've got enough space to put someone else in there, but you're not going to be super tight or super loose. I think all the positive ease that Kenneth has designed into this pattern is really nice. It's a nice amount of ease for you to wear your garment and not look sloppy. I have made some small fitting adjustments in the length that you are going to see now in Up Close and So Personal. This sewing segment will be super short, much shorter than the ones you're accustomed to because really this was so easy to make. So let's hop into there. These are the two pieces for the tuck stang dolman wrap and they have actually an extended dolman sleeve that is about three quarters length so if you like that style it's perfect i like short dolman sleeves on this long seam on the top there's a little notch there that helps you match the front and the back that notch there is going to be my reference point and i have just drawn a line down like that so you know pdf pattern has some pages joined and i've just kept that same line going down from that notch down to there I i'm gonna have this type of curve here on the bottom of my sleeve and i've just matched the same to the other side over there so these curves are going to match and be the same length on the side seams as well. I'm going to cut away this excess sleeve, stick a paper there to form the hem that I want, which will be narrow. So I can true it to this shape under there and I'll just show you that in a second. I've cut off the length of the sleeve and on the edge I've just stuck some paper. I've decided I'm going to have a narrow hem. So I've drawn a line 5 eighths of an inch from the edge there, there. So I'll just trim that out. Okay, so this is my little hem allowance, 5 eighths of an inch. I'll fold that in as if it was hemmed and I'll trim on the original shape that we have here under the arm and keeping that shape of the shoulder up there. So now this is how my pattern is going to look. It's going to have a little peak there, it's going to have a little curve there and when I sew this together I'm going to have the space there to be able to fold this in properly and not have a hem that puckers. So I'll repeat that on the other one and then I'll be set to go. There's a lengthen and shorten line there and from there up I've measured two inches and I've got a red line across. So I'm just going to overlap this so I can shorten it by two inches. I always find shortening things so much easier because you don't have to cut up anything and put paper behind like when you want to lengthen. I actually decided on the length by measuring the back from the top down and I know what my finished length is, what I want. When I fold the hem allowance up and measure from the top there, discounting seam allowance, I know I'll have the length that I prefer. This is the front facing and there's a lengthen and shorten line there. So if you were doing length adjustments, you would have to adjust this too. So I've drawn my line across and you can overlap there and then the facing is going to match the front that already has been modified. I'm actually not going to be using the facings. You would interface these facings. This is the front you would cut two and this is the back you'd cut one. They would be interfaced. I'm going to finish my garment with bias tape all around the neckline. I'm not opposed to using facings. It's just that my fabric choice would look better with bias tape. This is the center front of my top. I put a little pin there. From the pin down, the neckline is totally straight. So I'm not worried about that stretching out because it's on the straight of grain. But from here there's a curve and it will most definitely stretch out so i measured how much that measured up to the top here and it was 52 centimeters cut tiny piece of interfacing that is exactly 52 centimeters so i'm going to fuse that on the bottom there where the pin is and then up here on the top and then i'm just going to make this neckline fit into this length without it stretching out i don't want to have a really gapy neckline so I've already done this on the other side and it worked really well. If I go and stay stitch, it'll stretch out anyway and it'll still end up being longer than what I want it to be, than what the original shape is. I've got my tip right there and I'll just fuse that end there. And then I'll fiddle with all this curved area to make it fit in this space, no matter what. <laughs> so I'm basically fusing the extremes of this area and then fiddling with all the middle section to make it fit. So I've got my neckline underneath this 
interfacing and I've made it fit there. It's fine. There's not going to be any packets or anything. It was just the fabric trying to stretch out because it's sort of on the bias on this section that has the curve. Okay, so now I have a curve in the neckline that is super stable that's not going to stretch out of shape and I can just go ahead and sew this comfortably <laughs> and then when it's time to bind this, I'm not going to have a gaping neckline at all. And it's so narrow, it's less than a quarter of an inch, so this will be hidden within the binding that I'm going to use on the neckline. In reality, the only fiddly bit about my tuck stand and the choices I made had to do with cutting it out. That was a little bit fiddly and stabilizing that front neckline. Otherwise, the sewing is so easy. I'm serging the seams first because I just find it easier to manipulate. These are the shoulder seams here, and then I just sew them with the machine, straight stitch, half an inch seam allowance, and then I serge the side seams, very easy. Also sew them on the sewing machine. Here you can see I'm sewing the hem of the sleeve. You saw that I just left the 5 8 hem allowance, so it's not a really big hem. It's quite narrow, quite neat. And then I go ahead and sew the bottom hem. The bottom hem has to be sewn before I baste on the binding. You can see me basting the binding. I just grab my bias tape that I made out of the same fabric. I wrap it around the raw edge and just baste it on. I don't sew it on first and then flip it and then sew it again. I just think that's a waste of time in my opinion. And you can see the bottom of this bias tape at the center front. I've just sewn it by hand, a little tiny section at the bottom and then flipped it right sides out and it's a very neat finish. After hand basting that on, then it's just about edge stitching it, no pins, it's super easy with the hand basting and just trying to be really, really neat and sew on the edge. I'm not doing belt loops or the sash, so it was very easy to sew and it's going to be just like the way I want it to be, just a light cover up that will go over everything. I had to move because it started to sprinkle, but this mango tree is really dense, it'll keep me safe for a little bit. Here is my tax stand dolmen. I know it's going to be super hard to see. This is the front. You can see the neckline comes here diagonally and then from there it comes straight down. And that's why I was really interested in stabilizing this area of the neckline right there so that it wouldn't go out of shape. It's super nice, super stable. That little strip of interfacing was a real help. It was quite fiddly to fuse on but totally doable. If you just know what your finished length in that section needs to be by measuring your pattern, your paper, and replicating that, you're not going to have a gaping stretched out neckline. I think if I'd stay stitched it, it would have still stretched out because of the nature of this fabric. So that is a little trick for you. I did that also on the back. So inside, Hidden within the bias tape, you will find that little interfacing that no one is ever going to see. The bias tape that I made for this one is an inch wide finished. I used my bias tape maker that says 25 at the back. That means 25 millimeters or a finished width of an inch. And I think that gives a nice finish here where it can wrap around the raw edge and have a nice width. It's not that narrow. So that's good. This bottom bit of the bias tape was sewn by hand this little section there i'd flip the right sides together sewing that by hand using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then flipped it to the right side and then just place that over the hem at the bottom it's a super nice finish super little and i know i wouldn't have been able to get such a nice result with the machine if i'd wanted to sew that tiny little area and then flip it your hand works and it was only like three or four stitches because it's such a tiny area so you saw how easy this was to make. I could make a ton of these and I really like how this looks on. I shortened it for personal reasons. I like this length. You know, it's not short, it's not long. I've got shorter sleeves. I didn't use the facings, I used bias binding. But it's still in essence the same pattern. It's the same pattern pieces. It's just worn in a different way that makes sense to me. If you go to the Facebook group, I will link down below. You can see all these patterns made up by lots of people. And you can see the huge variety that can be possible with this. You know, Kenneth, she made it in this type of quilted fabric. It looks really interesting in the way that she's sewn it, but I know I would be super hot with a fabric like that. And you know, you could use wool, you can line it, you can use silk. You know, I even think I might want to make like a really fancy bathrobe, but just like really fancy, just lengthen the pattern and make it out of this really nice silk. I don't have a special garment like that to lounge around. I've never had one. I've always wanted to have one. 
and there's nothing stopping me because I can actually sew it myself. <laughs> so I think this could be a really good base. So it's time to mix and match. <laughs> I have taken pictures and video footage of my Taxton Dolman wrap, cover up, although I'm not wrapping it, on top of these three Mornington dresses and tops. Here's my Taxton Dolman, just loose like this, nothing wrapping it around or tying it up with a belt or anything because I have it with a Mornington top. This has a little bit of bulk because of the ties here so I wouldn't want this to be bulky over it as such. I just want this to lie open and just fall nicely and <laughs> lightly. It is a thin fabric. It hangs nice and loose and I, that's the vision I had for this. Bias bound on the edges so it's super neat. The tuck stand I made is a little bit shorter than the original and so is the Mornington top. It's just my preference. I like things a little bit shorter and I made sure that the top was slightly shorter than this so that it does make sense. Later on you will see other combinations with other things. For now this is one of the looks I can do. It's nice and loose, no sash, no tie, just like that. So I really like this to wear over anything, anything and everything in my wardrobe and it goes really well with this purple Mornington top and the denim skirt if I want to just wear this casually. Here I have my Mornington dress, the purple one with the black tack stand. It's going to go with everything and again I wanted it to be nice and loose and relaxed so that it, the wrap itself with the sash of the original version wouldn't do any bulk over this because I did really want to wear these together so I really like the look of this. Looks perfect. I could just throw this on over anything and feel amazing. I had to pair my tax stand dolman over my black and white Mornington dress. It's perfect. This black thing will go with everything and so will this. And together I think it looks a little bit more lively. This is just black but I think this is really striking, the print on this fabric. So I just really really like this. Um, just like I saw it in my head is the way I see it on and I feel amazing. So I'm super glad I made the decision to make the taxan dolmen in a light little cover up like this rather than having it be a wrap because then it would limit the way I could wear it with these dresses and I really wanted to wear this with these dresses. <laughs> That's how this will progress when I have cardigans and other types of tops and there'll be a huge mix. I'm having such a lot of fun sewing this and putting it all together. I will see you again tomorrow with the Prague top and dress. I'm excited about these, easy to sew, knit patterns. I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of fun making them my own and adding a little twist to them. So I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and I'll go and get out of the rain. Bye.